Welcome to the fifth and final section of this course. In this section, we will be building a React frontend to query the API we built in the previous section. We will begin by creating a new React project. We will then go ahead and create services that will consume the back in Node.js API. We will then set up the application state before moving on to create dump components like the products component, the orders component, and a cart component. Let's begin. In this video, we will start the React project using the CLI. You will learn about the project's goal, how to create a new project, and how to install the latest version of Bootstrap so that we can get up and running fast. This is how the application will end up looking like. We have three columns. In the middle one, we have the products. You see those are the images I've stored in Cloudinary and stored their link in the MongoDB database in the previous video. We can add them to cart. We can remove some from cart. And if we click order, the new order along with the total price is inserted on the left panel right here. In order to keep the section short and to the point, the React application we are going to be building is not going to have any form of authentication. You can then take the code files and enhance the application either by building your own authorization server or by using a third party solution like Firebase. For the rest of this section, however, we are going to assume that the user is shopping as a guest and we will add a specific user as part of the application state so that you can then change them and remove that user and add the logged in user if you decide to build the functionality yourself. The fastest way to get up and running with React.js is to use a particular library, particular CLI tool called Create React App. So open up a terminal and type npm i create dash react dash app and make sure to install this globally. When this package is installed, we can go ahead and use npx. Careful, this is not npm, this is npx. Create dash react dash app and the name of your application. In this case, I'm going to use the term client because we already have a server folder. Once the installation process is finished and it's going to take some time, it has to download a lot of packages. We can go ahead and run npm run start after we've changed a directory and uh, after we are inside the client application. And this is the default. Uh, React app that we created. Now let's go on and change the files so that we can lay the foundation for our application by installing Bootstrap and setting up the skeleton that our application is going to have. Since we already have this terminal open, let's go ahead and install Bootstrap by typing npm i or npm install Bootstrap. This will bring the latest version of Bootstrap, which, if I'm not mistaken, when this video was recorded, the latest version of bootstrap was 4.1.3 and after it has been installed we will need to open our client directory and find the index.js file which is something like a starting point for our application and import bootstrap there so that it can be used globally it is important to understand that react is using webpack at least any build that is spawned using the create react app package is using webpack behind the scenes so uh, you can import css files in javascript and webpack is going to take care of the rest so in here i'm going to type bootstrap slash and vs code is very helpful in providing the path so we need to import the css for bootstrap and of course, we also need to import the JavaScript file for any JavaScript functionalities that Bootstrap offers. Now, we're not done yet with uh, setting up Bootstrap. We also need to install jQuery and Popper. Those are two peer dependencies that Bootstrap has. It doesn't bring it itself. So when you install Bootstrap, it won't fetch jQuery and Popper on its own. So we have to install them ourselves. That's why they're called peer dependencies. That's because you can use, for example, any version of jQuery above a certain point, of course. Popper is a library for tooltips and pop-ups and stuff like that. We're not going to be using it, but it's needed in order for Bootstrap to function properly. So after these have finished, we are ready to go and inspect our app.js file. In the app.js file, 
you see that we have this class and inside this class we have a render method. This is where the HTML is put in React, inside the render method. It has to have a root component, so the first component inside the return statement needs to be a single component. You can put multiple divs, for example, here. We need to have only one of them. I'm going to give it an ID of app, and inside it, I'm going to set a placeholder for where our navbar is going to be. The navbar is going to be a separate component once we've created it, but for now, let's uh, put this placeholder here and ignore the error. Then let's go ahead and create a new div and use the bootstrap class container fluid. Now, notice something different. This is different syntax than regular HTML you may be used to. Instead of saying class equals container fluid, we use the term class name. Now, what is class name and why does React use it? The reason is called JSX. This is actually a JS file. Notice that we are using HTML inside it without using any special syntax that will allow us to use HTML. This is one of React's great benefits, JSX. But it has some peculiarities of sorts. So for example, you can't use the keyword class to create a class in HTML. And that is because class is a reserved keyword in JavaScript for creating ES6 classes. And that is why we use class name instead of class. It's hard to get used to at first, but when you do, it's like you don't even think about it when you are using it. Now let's continue. All bootstrap projects need to have a container. And right inside the container, we must put a row element. So the next thing that we're going to build is a div that's going to have class name of row. And inside that div, we're going to place the three columns that you saw in the finished project at the beginning of this video. So we need a div with class name, let's say, call sm3. And let's give it a class, CSS class of main area. Actually, we can go ahead and copy this three times. So we end up with three copies representing the three columns that we need to have in our application. And I'm going to go inside each one of them using this cool VS Code feature. And I'm going to set up some placeholders. So this is where the orders are going to go. This is where the products will appear, the list of products in a grid-like fashion. And in here is where the cart should go. Now let's go ahead and open the app CSS. This is the file used for uh, providing CSS classes to our app component and therefore to the rest of the application. And in here, I'm going to set up some classes. So for example, we want the container to occupy at least the whole viewport. So I'm going to use mean height equal to 100 VH. VH represents the whole height of the viewport, the screen or the browser, call it whatever you like. The main areas wrapper is the row in which we placed all the columns and I'm going to set its main height to 100 VH as well. And for each main area, I'm going to set the height to 100% so that it occupies the whole container, which is the row element. And one more thing, remember those two lines that separated the three columns? We are going to put them in the middle column, which we're going to call products container. And we are going to use the CSS border properties to do that. So we have a left border, let's say style solid, because we want a solid line, not a dotted line or something like that. Let's use a width of two pixels because one pixel maybe too small and we're going to say that its color is gray. So this is the left bar, the left border that you saw in the project at the beginning of this video. Let's go ahead and create the right one using the same CSS properties. Cool. Now that we're done with that, let's go back to our app.js file and it's time to create a navbar so that this really annoying red squiggly line 
disappears under the navbar. So I created a file called navbar. We need to import React and the component class from the React library. Notice that it is very important that you import React even if you don't use it. So you're going to see that we're not going to use the word the React class in this file. That doesn't mean it's not needed. In any file that you may be using JSX, and in particular the render method, you need to have React imported. VS Code grays it out and behaves as if we're not using it, but in fact we are. If we remove React, VS Code itself is going to say that React needs to be present on JSX files. Now, for this, I'm going to paste the navbar functionality. We don't need to build it from scratch. This is a React version of the default navbar provided in the Bootstrap site. And having the navbar at the root of our project is a bit weird. So I'm going to go ahead and create a component directory where I'm going to place both the navbar and the component that we create next in one of the next videos. Actually, all the components are going to go there. And back in the app.js file, we will import the navbar. Unfortunately, VS Code doesn't pick up and it can't import it automatically by clicking on control dot. It usually does, but not on JSX as it seems. And in here, I'm going to say import components navbar. And now you see that VS Code located the navbar class and we have successfully imported it. Let's give the columns some titles and remove the comments. So we have orders here, some products here maybe, and we also have a cart at the third column. Here you go. So why don't we run the application and witness what we built. It seems like we have an issue with the sizing. Remember, Bootstrap offers a 12 column grid. We have three grids of uh, size three each. So that sums to nine out of 12. So we need to go back to the code and make the products column a bit larger because that was the initial goal. But because we copied and pasted every line, we ended up with this issue. So if we change that to something like six so call dash sm dash six and save of course we don't need to reload the browser will be reloaded automatically by the server that's serving our react app and you can see that it now works